together with us. Come on. is God alone. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Last week we had a full moon and I got up in the middle of the night and it just looked like the light was on in the house. And I was just had to lean back and thank God because we see the changing of the moon, all the different phases, and we see the um, changes of seasons. We see the changes in humankind. But you know what? God makes changes, but he never changes. He is unchangeable. Thank you so much. Ha, glory to God. He's unstoppable and he's unshakable. We praise God for being that un-God. Hallelujah. Thank you. Praise God. He is great, unchangeable. He alone is God. There is no one, absolutely no one like him. Many people might say they got a God, but we have the ultimate. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I used to have this friend back in West Virginia, and he had this little Pinto. Y'all probably don't even know what a Pinto is. But this car, it was just a little old Pinto. And of course, I just had a little old Chevy myself, but, but that car was the best car ever. Let him tell it. It could beat any car on the road. And that's the way I am about my God. There is none like my God. Hallelujah. And my God is not a pinto. Whatever they got out there, I don't even know what those things are. Uh, oh, Maseratis and uh, Bentleys and all of those, the biggest and the best. That's my God. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Come 
on, lift your voices and say, you are here. He's touching every heart this morning if you let him. We worship you. Come on, just open your heart. Say, you are here. You're healing every life. I don't know who needs healing this morning. But if that's you, just lift your hands and just worship. You are here. You're turning lives around. Oh, God, we thank you. I worship you. You are here. He's here to mend somebody's broken heart. I don't know if that's you. Declare that this morning we call you. That's the God we serve. This morning we call on the way maker. A miracle worker. My God. you're going through this morning. His name's Jesus. He's the answer. You wipe away your tears. You mend every broken heart. You're the answer to it all. Oh, 
just who God is. If it's love you need this morning, if it's healing you need this morning, there are promises that God is all that we need him to be, that he will do exceedingly and abundantly above anything we can ask or even think about. So don't limit God this morning. Whatever you came in here with, give it to him. He's the way maker. He's the miracle worker. Come on, just declare that this morning. Lift your voice and say, that is that's who you are. That's who you are. That is who you are. Oh God, you're faithful. That is who you are. That's who you are. Whatever you need, don't that be afraid to ask. Who you are. That is who you are. That is who you are. Hallelujah. Let's just worship. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's just who you are, God. Um, let's get into the word of God. Turn with me to Matthew 14, um, verse 22. Matthew 14, verse 22. Matthew 14, verse 22. And I'll read. It reads, Immediately Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side while he sent the multitude away. And when he had sent the multitude away, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. Now whenever, when evening came, he was alone there but the boat was now in the middle of the sea, tossed by the waves, for the wind was contrary. Now in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went to them, walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled or terrified, saying, it's a ghost. And they cried out in fear. So they were going crazy in this boat. If you can imagine the disciples, these grown men, acting crazy, screaming and hollering and running all over the place in the boat because they thought they saw a ghost. Can you picture that? Okay, let's move on. But immediately Jesus spoke to them saying, be of good cheer, it is I, do not be afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it is you, command me or tell me to come to you on the water. So he said, come. And when Peter had come down out of the boat, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw that the wind was boisterous, he was afraid and began to sink and cried out, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched out his hand and caught him and said to him, O oh, you of little faith, O oh, you of little faith, of you, O oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? And when they got into the boat, the wind ceased, then those who were in the boat, came and worshiped him, saying, truly, you are the son of God. And when they had crossed over, they came to the land of Gennesaret, um, which is the land of paradise, a land of paradise in Galilee, um, a beautiful place, a place of uh, fertilization. Um, so it was a prosperous place. But get this. And when the men that, of that place recognized him, meaning Jesus, they sent out into all that beautiful land, that region, and brought to him all who were sick and begged him that they might only touch the hem of his garment. And as many as touched it were made perfectly 
well. So that suggests to me, I don't know if it does to you, that there was some folk that was still messed up that just refused not to touch the hem of his garment and was not made well and was not made perfect. Something, isn't it? Interesting. Next verse, or right, next uh, scripture I want to read. It's just one few words, Matthew twenty-two fourteen. 14. It says, many are, for many are called, but few are chosen. For many are called, but few are chosen. I want to talk today on the subject, I am the chosen. Look at somebody next to you or near you and look them in the eye. Smile at them if you don't have your mask on um, and let them know, I am the chosen. I am the chosen. Father God, we just thank you for what you have done in our lives today. We thank you for blessing us, keeping us throughout this week. We thank you for just giving us a greater desire for you, Father God, a greater hunger for you. You said if we hunger and thirst after righteousness, we will be filled. And we're looking for the filling, even on today. In Jesus' name, let everyone say amen. amen. I am the chosen. I am the chosen. I firmly believe with all my heart that when we come to church, we should come with an expectation. We should come with a desire to, to get something from God and also give something to him as well. We should not be willing to sit back, relax, chill, and just see what happens when we come to church. That we should be there with an intent to have, get something from God. God is always here to bless us, to keep us, to deliver us, to do whatever we need him to do. We just have to come with a mindset that I'm going to get what I need from God on this day. Do I have any witnesses in this building today? Do I have a few people that have that expectation from God, who want something from God, who appreciate him so much that do, I'm, there's nothing that's going to stop me from receiving what God has for me? Do I have a, just a few people? All I need is just a few. I don't need a whole bunch. If I can get just a few people. God has something specific for each and every person in this room. How many in here believe that they, you are called by God? Raise your hand. Raise your hand. Come on, raise your hand. And if the person next to you ain't raised their hand, just nub them and say, get your hand up anyway. You are the called. God has called you with a holy and righteous calling. We just have to accept it. And so I want to go into the, the, Matthew, uh, the Matthew 14 uh, chapter a little bit and talk about some things and bring out some truths that I want you to see as we go into it. I'm talking about I am the chosen. I am the chosen. We walk into a situation which is very interesting. And a few weeks ago, um, our bishop preached about the, the feeding, the five loaves and the two fish. The great miracle, right? Great miracle. Um, the title of the message was, he didn't make us for nothing. And I know English majors are like, that was the title? My goodness, double negatives. Um, but that was the title of that message. And he talked in detail. And I would encourage you to go back and watch it. I'm not going to talk about the five loaves, and the two fishes. He did a great job. Go back and watch it. You'll get all the, the, the specifics behind it. But what was happening here is now he commands these disciples to get on a boat and go to the other side. And now you have a boat which is on its way or this boat that is in between two great miracles. We read about the one. You just finish feeding the at least five, a little over 5,000 people. And now you're on your way over to this prosperous land that somehow, some way got messed up, jacked up, turned out to where you had all of these six people around in this supposedly fertile and beautiful and prosperous land. So now they're trying to maneuver over or go over to the other side, but they run into a storm. 
they run into a circumstance that has them stuck in the middle between two great miracles. Two great miracles. And Jesus, he goes and deals with the multitude, sends them away, and he goes up into the mountains and to pray. And you would think, why didn't he go? Why didn't he just go with them over to the other side? But you have to understand that prior to that big multitude coming to him to get those five loaves and two fish, prior to that, Jesus gets word that his cousin was brutally murdered. And so he was beginning, he just wanted a little bit of me time. So he was on his way in this deserted place to get away for a little bit, to regroup, to, to get recharged, because emotionally, my cousin just died. My cousin just got his head chopped off. My cousin was brutally murdered. And so now I'm sitting in this place wanting to just get, just be by myself. I don't need, it didn't even, I don't think it really even talked about him going away to pray. It just tell him he's just trying to get away a little bit because of the circumstance and situation. And so here comes the multitude. They say, uh-oh, that looked like Jesus. And now you have all of these people that he now has to minister to, even though in the moment he needs to be ministered to. Because although he was God in the flesh and he was, he was a divine person on earth, he still was, had human flesh wrapped around him. He still had certain desires, certain feelings, certain things, just like all of us. The Bible talks about how he was tempted in all things, but he sinned not. So he was, he, he had some temptations come his way, but he made a decision. Look at somebody and say, you got to make the right decision sometimes, just sometimes, just not a, you may not do it all the time, but just sometimes, you know, just sometimes, just make the right decision. So, fast forward, we've, we're here, they're in the middle of the sea, they're going through all of this, that, you know, and like Bishop talked about before, um, in one of his messages, you, you, these disciples weren't just like priests just walking around with Bibles or anything, these people were skilled fishermen, they had, you know, they knew how to maneuver a boat and do things and what you needed to do because they were fishermen. They were sailors. They knew what to do. But they were stuck and didn't know what to do. And so now Jesus comes out to them walking on the water. And they're going, they're freaking out because they think it's a ghost. And they're going crazy, yelling and screaming. I mean, if you can imagine just it's, it's, it's a little bit dark. They're out in the middle of the sea. They see this light coming at them. And I remember one time I was on a, a cruise ship. And I don't know if any of you ever been on a cruise ship um, near, down near Florida. And, you know, it was, it was a casino boat. I remember. It was a, it, don't, uh, who was it? Uh, uh, okay. <laughs> y'all, y'all silly. Um, <laughs> it was a casino boat. And so we had to go outside of U.S. waters if you wanted I mean, I was on the deck. I wasn't down there. Give it to me. No, I wasn't doing that. I was on the deck, you know, with some of the other people that were on the boat, and we were talking, and then all of a sudden, we seen this light coming over the water, and we're out in the middle. There's no land, because we're outside of U.S. waters. There was no land around us, and all I saw was this little light coming over the, and I'm like, is that another boat? They're going to blow us out. The, I mean, all types of thoughts were going to my mind. And then one of the, I guess, staff came. It was like, oh, that's just the moon coming over the water. But it, it nearly freaked us out because we didn't know what was happening. And so I can imagine that when they saw this light walking over the water, that it, it, it was a little bit, but they were freaking out, as according to what the Bible. They were terrified. They were afraid. They were screaming and hollering. And Jesus comforts them, saying, don't, don't, it's me. Don't, don't get nervous. It's me. And so as, as the, the story goes on, we come to Peter. And Peter, you know, he says, bid me to come, Lord. And he just says, come. And Peter steps out of the boat, walks on the water. 
And we always, a lot of preachers, we always beat up on Peter because you had the opportunity of a lifetime to walk on the water, to go to Jesus, but because you had some doubt, you was looking at the waves and all the wind and everything going on, you all of a sudden sank in the water. But I like to, you know, I'm optimistic. I like to look at things, what they say, the glass half full with this situation. And I'd rather look at, the, I look at this situation like this. Um, at least he had a little bit of faith. He had a little bit of faith. He didn't have a whole lot of faith, but he had a little bit of faith. And guess what? Just with having a little bit of faith, you can do some impossible things with just a little bit of faith. Yeah, he didn't make it to his destination when he got on that water and started to walk. He, he, he didn't make it, but yet he was able to do something that he could not do before, which is walk on water because he had a little bit of faith. Because of that little bit of faith, yeah, he was sinking, sinking, had to cry out, but at least he didn't drown in a circumstance and situation because he had a little bit of faith. And some of you in this room, if you just have a little bit of faith, God will be able to do some things, do some miracles in your life. Think you won't drown in your circumstance and situation. You won't get knocked up and knocked out if I just have a little bit of faith. That's all I need is just a little bit of faith. And the Bible says, without faith, it's impossible to please God. So if I have just a little bit of faith, I'm making him at least smile <laughs> with just a little bit of faith. And the last time I read, in Matthew 17 and 20, it says, if you have faith as the size of a mustard seed, you will be able to say to a mountain, be thou removed, and then cast it into, just a little bit of faith. Now, now one thing, and I'm, I'm, it looks like he's looking up something about probably the mustard seed. He always do that. Um, but the thing with the mustard seed, if you look at mustard, and um, I think Bishop pointed this out the one time, it's those little, little specks in that mustard you be looking at. That's a mustard seed. If you plant a mustard seed, in the ground, it, turn, it doesn't turn into a bush. That little bit is, doesn't, isn't just a little bush or shrub. It turns into a tree, a 20-foot tree, 20 feet high, 20 feet wide. That's a mustard seed. So if I have a faith the size of a mustard seed, I will be able to do things that I never would have able to do before. I will have the ability, just a little bit of faith. That's, there's, there you go. He, I told you he was going to do it. Um, <laughs> just a little bit of faith. That, see that little, in, the, in that person's hand, that little bit of speck in his hand turns into a 20-foot tree. Come on, come on. Just a little bit of faith. Turn and look at somebody and say, just have a little bit of faith. Just a, just a little bit. You don't, look at somebody else. Look, and just say, just a little bit of faith will turn your situation around. Uh, just a little bit of faith. Just a little bit of faith. And so, after he, you know, and, and, and this is, it, it just blows my mind. Just a little bit of faith. That's all I need. I may not, you know, I'm, Peter didn't reach his destination. He fell short. He sunk in the water. He didn't reach his destination, but his destination came to him. Y'all understand that? And some of y'all, yeah, you may be a little bit short, but if you trust in God, just with a, you'll, you'll, you may not get there the way you think you should, but God will bring your destination right in the, just a little bit of faith, just a little bit of faith. Let, let me move on, let me move on, let me move on. So they reached their destination. And, you know, he gets br Brother Peter back into the boat. They get to their destination. It's a miracle. Um, you know, they go over there. Like I said, beautiful country, has a reputation, <clears throat> supposed to be a paradise. It's messed up, jacked up, turned out. And so another miracle is needed. And I'm going to come back to that in just a moment. 
Let's go into um, Matthew 22 and 14. Matthew 22 and 14. We read, for many are called and few are chosen. For many are called, few are chosen. And I, I have to admit, when I first came across this scripture, I was a freshman here in college at IUP. I struggled with that, that scripture. I really did. Because, you know, like some of us do, we read one verse of a scripture and we just run with it. Um, and one of the things that we learn from, from PJ um, and Sister Lael is, you know, don't just read one verse. Read what's going on before and sometimes read what's going on afterwards. You'll, you'll find out a whole lot more to why that one little verse that you just hold on to was mentioned in the Bible. And so I struggled with it before for the simple reason because my mind, in my mind, you know, like I, I asked all of you earlier, how many in here is called? Everybody raised their hand. I'm called. I'm called. I, I know I'm called. He called me and when I was in my mother's womb. I was called by God. Glory to God. And so I'm called. But then I read that. For many are called, but few are chosen. And I'm like, wait a second. Does God come down here and say, you good? Uh, I don't know, last night. Uh, <laughs> you good. You, 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 boy, you reading that about Brother Mark, did you forgive her the other day? I don't know. And so in my mind, my limited mind, I was thinking God was coming down and just, you're chosen, you're not. You're chosen, you're not, you're chosen, you're not, you, 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 y'all good, but that whole section over there, y'all done. Uh, and so that was in my mind. But what God began to, when I began to read bef before the, the verse, and even somewhat afterwards, I began to learn that the reason that that scripture is used is because the individual, there's at least one individual, actually it was a whole bunch of individuals, it was, it, they were talking about a wedding, the parable was about a wedding. And a whole bunch of folk was invited to the wedding, but only a few people chose to come. And then even with the chosen that came, there was one individual who chose not to put on the right garment. You invited to this big time wedding and you cho chose not to put on the appropriate garment. And what God began to say to me is, it's not me coming down here saying, you're in, you're out, you're in, you're out, you're in. It's us saying, do I want to be in or do I want to be out? It's the decisions that we make, the decisions that we make daily in terms of what we're going to do for God. The, the in, intentional desires that we have to please him. Like I said, you don't need big, gigantic faith to do this. All you need is a little bit of faith into believing what God has called you to do. And he's like he commanded them, the, the people in the boat. He said, go to the other side. They ran into a little bit of trouble. They ran into a little bit of circumstances, situations. Their conditions changed from being smooth, going sailing across the, the sea. And it became, began to get a little bit turbulent. And all of a sudden, I'm going crazy in this boat. I'm acting like I have no clue. I'm talented, I'm gifted, but I'd make a, I'd make a bad decisions. And had one individual make the, the right decision to come out of all of that mess and stand on the water with Jesus. And, I, and like I said, we, I've heard a whole bunch of preachers speech about pre Brother Peter and sinking and not having the faith and everything else. But I'll say this, I'd rather be on a stormy sea with Jesus than in a boat full of confused, crazy folk. I'd rather be sinking my circumstances up to my neck, holding the hand of Jesus, than sitting in a boat trying to figure out where are we going to go next. Not being able to navigate or figure out is this the right way or is that the right way? Because I can't see. I'd rather be with Jesus in the stormy seas of life than to be sitting on a boat 
and in a circumstance where people don't know what they're doing. That's me. And God says, we have to begin to make the right choice. Because one of the things that will happen when we begin to make good choices, when we begin to do that, we'll, we'll, we build confidence in who we are. We build, we build confidence in whose we are. We have the authority and power. God gives us authority and a power to be able to do things that we thought we could not do. You know, um, thank you, Holy Ghost. The Lord blessed me with the opportunity to train individuals, little kids, in terms of playing sports, mainly basketball. So when I'm, you know, when I'm training them to play basketball, one of the things I tell them, when you got the ball in your hand, you are a shooter. And you basketball folks, help me out with this. When you got the ball and you are a shooter, what do shooters want to do? Dang, you ain't even a basketball player. He knew that one. <laughs> shooters want to shoot. And so I teach them, when you have that ball in your hand, you are a shooter. And shooters want to do what? Be who you are. Don't be anything less than who you are. Have the confidence and the authority and the power in who you are when you step out on that court. Likewise, as believers, we need to have confidence and the power and authority of who we are. God has called us and he is wanting to choose, make a choice in bringing us in to the fold and to do and accomplish the things that he has for us. We just have to have the confidence to make good decisions. How many is here willing to make a good decision? I am the chosen. And if I'm the chosen, I need to make certain decisions based on who I know I am and nothing less. Right? Basketball players, if I'm a shooter, I'm going to shoot. And there's nothing that's going to stop me. We wa I watched a, a women's basketball game yesterday, a high school women's basketball game. And it was, you know, I was just flip, flipping around on while I was cooking. And I'm watching North Allegheny, which is a big powerhouse, women's basketball in Pittsburgh, playing Upper St. Clair, which is pretty good. Game is, Upper St. Clair, you were supposed to be lose by 20 points. But they had this freshman that when she got that ball in her hand, she knew who she was. North Allegheny didn't know who she was, but she knew who she was. And when she got that ball, they down by two points or down by three points. She got that ball, that ball went up in the air with no hesitation. Bang, game tied. This is within 30 seconds. She scored five points. She got that ball off, boom. Now they playing good defense. Gets the, gets the ball, boom, 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 dribbles down. Of course, now they know who she is. North Allegheny adjusts. They come at her. She has to give that ball up. But she doesn't stop because she knows who she is. She kept moving. She kept coming. She wanted that ball. She came back to that ball, got that ball, and the rest was history. They couldn't stop her. She went, boom, going hard to that hoop, ball off the glass, game over. Go home, North Allegheny. I might see you in the state playoffs, but I'm going to play for a Whipple championship. She had confidence in who she is as a basketball player. All of you, every person in here, you raise your hand. I am called. But who wants to be chosen? Who wants to go to that next level? I am the chosen. I am the chosen. And get the, and th here's another thing that go, <laughs> um, I was, I'll, I'll, I'll save that for later. I am the chosen. God has a plan for each and every one of us. He wants to transform our life. He wants to turn our life totally around. And we have to just make the right decision. We have to be like Peter. I'm willing to step out in the impossible, even though the conditions may not be, hey, the conditions ain't working for the boat. How is it going to work for me stepping out side of the boat? But he made the right decision. He made a decision that changed his life forever. Who's willing to make be one of the chosen? Who's willing to say, I am that chosen? I'm willing to make that decision. I'm willing to come out from among any circumstance, any situation, and maybe even people. You might have to say, deuces. 
But God is looking for those individuals who are wanting to move from just being the called to being the chosen. Let's pray. Let's pray. Let's pray. Father God, I just thank you for the word of God. I thank you for just blessing each and every person in this room. Uh, we want to make a great choice. We're not just looking to be good. We want to be great in everything that we do, even the choices that we make for you. We want to step out from among all of this chaos, all of the circumstances we're dealing with daily, and we want to be a part of what you are doing in this next move of God. We seem stuck in between where we, where we are coming from to where you are taking us, and we want to make the right decision to move into that next, that next phase, that next, we're, we're in between two great miracles that are about to happen. I just, I just sense the Lord is about to do something mighty through each individual in here, as well as Victory Christian Assembly. We just have to make the right choices to come out, to step out, to move out. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look at somebody and tell them, I'm chosen. I'm the chosen. You're looking at a chosen person. You're looking at a confident person. You're looking at a person that has authority and that has power. Hallelujah. Woo. I feel something breaking in here. Hallelujah. Somebody needs to just throw their hands up and give God some praise in here. Hallelujah. If you know God has done something for you, even right now. The song says, don't wait till the battle is over to shout now. Open your mouth and give God the glory right now. If you believe it. Hallelujah. I want to say high five somebody real quick, but I know we're we in the COVID. But hallelujah. That's the, God is good. God is good. Some of y'all, some of y'all just gotta get some hand sanitizer. Something. We got some hand sanitizer. I gotta high five somebody. I gotta do something to give God some glory. I'm the chosen. I am the chosen. There's no mistake in who I am. God has changed my life forever, and I'm gonna I'm gonna. Oh, we have to move on. We have to move on. <laughs> the Kojic in me was coming out. The Kojic in me was coming out. Ah, God, help me. Thank you, Jesus. Um, I do have a little Baptist in there somewhere, but sometimes the Kojic comes out. I can't help myself. Hallelujah. If you'd like to give electronically to Victory, you can do so in a number of ways. From your web browser on your computer, tablet, or phone, use the URL easytithe.com forward slash VCA. This will take you directly to our Easy Tithe giving portal. Choose the Give Now tab to enter the fund you'd like to contribute to and plug in the amount. You can also access the same portal by texting Text the word GIVE to area code 724-204-1995. As an alternative, you can download the dedicated Easy Tithe app on either the iOS or Android platform. You can also use Cash App. Here is our info, dollar sign Victory PJ. Lastly, you can access our Easy Tithe giving portal through our website, www.myvictory.org Hold on my brother The change is gonna come Be strong my sister For your work is not done no Keep on believing And hold on tight He's able to bring you joy in the morning light, sing, he's able. Hey. He's able. He's able. I know that he can.
Uh, the next thing, Christianity 101 will be starting up very soon. If you are interested in learning about the class, this is um, a class that we have been doing for years, probably over a decade or so. And it's a four-week class or it's a four-session class where we work and we talk about the fundamentals of Christianity. You know, I don't know about you, but when I was baptized my first time, I got baptized not knowing anything except that I was going to get my name on an envelope and I joined the church. That's what I thought baptism was all about. And I was pleasantly wrong. Baptism is all about something completely different. It's about connecting, giving ourselves to Christ. And so Christianity 101, this is a class that we'll be, we'll be doing via Zoom, all right? So Eliana is in the back. She has a clipboard. If you are interested, um, please write your name down, write down your email, and we will be starting it up in the next few weeks because we will be baptizing people who want to be baptized on Good Friday here this year, Good Friday in April. So make sure that you sign up for that, all right? Oh. We're back in our sanctuary at 418 Church Street in Indiana again, as well as continuing to offer Virtual Victory online. We'll be following CDC guidelines for safety protocols. You can stay in touch with the Victory electronically in a number of ways. Visit our website, myvictory.org. There you can find out more about us and check out our blog. Also follow us on social media such as Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Instagram. Download our app for your mobile device on either the Android or iOS platforms. There you can view the latest sermons, check out music and ministries, post a prayer request, or visit our chat room. We hope you've had an excellent worship experience today. Have a great week, and in all you do, we pray that you walk in the victory God has designated for you. Be blessed, and we'll see you next week, online or in person.